Welcome back. Today we'll cover measurement level, level, although we've already hinted at it. There are two overlapping questions about a variable that together determine what types of statistical procedures make sense for it. I'll go in the opposite order of field and start with the granularity. Theoretically, there are two distinct categories here, continuous and discrete. A continuous variable can take any value within its range to the limits of its precision. Discrete variables can only take specific values, often whole numbers. So if I tell you that I weigh 150 pounds, it could be either discrete or continuous. If what I mean is I weigh precisely 150.000000, etc. pounds, then it's continuous. If what I mean is I weigh within a few pounds of 150, it's discrete. Other things uh, are clearly not continuous. So for example, the number of items you buy in a trip to the store can only be a whole number. You can't buy a half of an item. If you buy a half of a pound of something, it's still one item. So there are two problems here with this distinction. First, no variable can be truly continuous as measured by the definition I gave. For every zero I add after 150, there's another that could be added after and that might not be zero. Likewise, nanoseconds, one, one millionth of a second, are technically discrete. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to add an S on the end to make it plural. Second, and related, in practice, the lines are very blurry and discrete variables with a certain level of precision are treated as continuous. To some extent, what to do is up to the researcher. It should be clear that if I code age using the question, are you older than 40, it should be treated as discrete. But what if I have age in years, and if I'm making life tables for the size of the population of each age, treating years as continuous should be fine. But if I'm studying the effect of age kindergarten entry on how many friends a child make, then rounding to the nearest year is almost meaningless. Field makes a big deal about whether a variable is discrete, but in many cases the line is fuzzy enough that it's not actually a big deal. For now, know what it means, use it when you need to. Of course, there are times it matters quite a lot. So, for example, granularity of measurement has become newsworthy as Americans debate whether the Electoral College should be reconsidered. As it stands, all but two of the 50 U.S. states select their electors using a winner-take-all system, where the candidate who received the most votes in that state, even if only by one vote, is allotted all the electors. This is the maximally discrete approach that encourages candidates to focus their campaigning on swing states, that is, states where neither candidate has a substantial advantage, so winning people your, to your side or getting more people to vote that wouldn't have voted at all and will vote for you can make the difference of a substantial delegation of electors. Pennsylvania is a swing state, thus we got more attention in the past presidential election. States that use proportional allocation instead allocate electors based on the percentage of the votes for each candidate in their state. That's a semi-continuous measure. A popular vote would move even closer on the scale to continuous by measuring in individual votes. We have somewhere between 100 and 200 million cast in a presidential election, rather than the votes of 538 electors based on popular voting. Now, if whether something is discrete or continuous is not always important, what is almost always going to be important is the level of measurement. There are three or four levels of measurement depending on who you're talking to. Nominal variables are a type of categorical variable, that is, they have categories. You can think of nominal variables as names to help remember because they include anything that has categories but no order. A Baptist is not more or less of a denomination than a Lutheran, even if in your data set they're coded using numbers. The same goes for men and women. By convention, females are often coded one and males zero, but if we ignore other possibilities for now, Neither is better or more or worse or less than the other. ID numbers are also nominal. They might be assigned in order based on when something is collected or input into the data set or so on, but they're used only to uniquely identify cases. That unique or name are the cues that something is nominal. Interval variables fall at the other extreme. These are numbers with definite meaning. Dollars, heights, time spans. GPAs, and so on. A variable is interval level if it meets two criteria. First, it consists of substantively meaningful numbers. And second, the same distance means the same thing no matter where on the scale it falls. 
Number one means that arbitrary numbers like ID numbers or codes for nominal variables don't count. Number two means, for example, that $1,000 is $1,000 whether it's the difference between 1 and 2,000 or between 1 million and 1 million 1,000. Another way to define this condition is that you can add or subtract interval level measures and they still make sense. Some people also talk about another even stricter level, scale level variables. The difference between a scale variable and an other interval level variables is less clear, but it is that scales must also have a meaningful zero value, that is zero must mean something as well as the numbers themselves meaning something, and they must be able to be multiplied and divided instead of only added and subtracted and still make sense. So income in dollars is a scale, you can have income of zero dollars, and you can say that two thousand dollars is twice one thousand dollars. But GPA is less clear because it's a 4.0 actually twice a 2.0? Not sure. This leaves only one level of measurement to discuss, and it's the messiest one, ordinal variables. The values of ordinal variables can be placed in order, helps to remember the name, but the distances aren't directly comparable. So think of satisfaction with your shopping experience the last time you went to a store. If you rated it on a seven point scale, is the difference between a six and a seven the same as that between a one and a zero? or a 1 and a 2. Very often ordinal variables are ratings uh, or combinations of other variables. So ordinal variables exist in this fuzzy state. Sometimes they're treated like nominal variables, sometimes they're treated like interval variables, sometimes they have their own unique ways of being treated. They're both categorical, they have distinct categories, and ordered. Part of what matters is how nominal-like or interval-like they are, so a yes-no question could be ordinal because yes is more than no, but also is nominal because it has two distinct mutually exclusive categories with nothing theoretically in between. A hundred-point scale of life satisfaction, likewise, is ordinal but would almost always be analyzed with procedures designed for interval-level variables. So norms on this vary by discipline. In sociology, a rule of thumb is that anything with more than seven ordered categories can generally be treated as interval. It's not always true, but you won't be marked down on a test in this class for treating them that way as long as you recognize their actual measurement level if you're asked. Excuse me. So to wrap up, discrete variables can only take on certain values and nothing in between, while continuous variables can theoretically have any value. The two levels of categorical values variables can be remembered using their titles. Nominal has no inherent order, like a name, while ordinal does have order. Interval variables are distinct from both in that values and differences are substantively meaningful. Scale variables are a subset of interval variables with true zero and meaningful products like twice, a half, and so on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.